want to follow up on the question line of questioning that Senator Stefano started with regard to that private security vendor, ID.me, that uh, is providing additional identity verification after that surge of fraudulent claims uh, in the federal PUA program. Um, my understanding is it was $850,000 for that initial contract. It's now been extended. There was no additional cost. Did I, was that correct? I would have to get back to you with the costs associated with IDME. Oh, okay. Were there any changes made when that contract was extended? With the PUA program? Um, with that second contract with the de between the department and IDME. Were there any changes to the contract? Not that I'm aware of, but that would be something I'd have to look into further, Senator. Okay. What office is performing the day-to-day -day supervision of this contract for the Department of Labor and Industry? Our, our unemployment compensation uh, benefits policy program, I believe, but okay. I, I will definitely check on that. So under that contract, has IDME reported any unauthorized access, use, release, loss, destruction of data, or, or confidential information? To my knowledge, not under that contract, no. Okay. Um, has the Commonwealth audited the computing devices being used by IDME to determine whether those devices have current antivirus software and, and up-to-date patches and workarounds? So our Office of Administration, Office of Information Technology, um, those are the ones who I believe have, have had conversations with IDME to make sure that they have the appropriate fraud detection measures in place. Okay. Um, and those discussions, I believe, have occurred. Very good. So we know that there have been high-profile data breaches of companies, healthcare providers, universities, state and federal agencies. Um, a, a lot of people are concerned. I, I think back to the 2015 Office of Personnel Management data breach where all those federal employees' information was compromised. Um, we've got tens of thousands of Commonwealth residents who are submitting their identity information to IDME in order to receive that assistance. So we need to assure that their data remains confidential and protected from theft or unauthorized disclosure. So when an applicant uses the department ID me process to establish their identity and they submit their government issued ID, other documents, they do a, a video selfie, um, where does that data storage go? No, and that's, uh, that's something that we, I know has been basically popping up a lot more recently. Um, and I know that, you know, IDME has been addressing those issues and, and how they store that data and offering more clear opt-out measures for individuals so they don't retain that information. But I can get you further details on that so you can be more assured of that. Yeah, I, I think that would be really helpful. I, I want to know who ultimately is safeguarding that applicant's information. They're a third-party vendor. They're getting all this information. We are a government entity. We are compelling that. So how is it being safeguarded? Who has access to that information? Under what circumstances and, and what authorization are required of those individuals accessing our citizens' personal information? And ultimately, who's going to retain ownership of the applicant's data that they've provided to IDME, I think is, is really important. And I know that Atomization is one of those data processing techniques that removes or, or modifies that personally identifiable information. It results in um, data that cannot be readily associated with any one individual unless that access has a key code. Um, once it's uploaded to IDMe, are the applicants stored data de-identified and coded um, to thwart identity theft. Do, do we know this? So I know that the Office of Administration's minimum requirements is that any kind of PII, personal identification information, is encrypted. So um, I can get confirmation of that for your office, but that is I, a, a requirement. Right, because my understanding is that IDME is requiring your government-issued ID photo and a video selfie to be uploaded. And I understand as well that they are also using facial recognition technology to verify the applicant's photo. So there are a lot of concerns. And with regard to facial recognition identifiers, um, there has been 
uh, some concern about, you know, the, d the data, when it will be destroyed, under what supervision, um, is the destruction certified? Um, because after a PUA claim is processed, payments are made and a case is closed. So what happens to the data that's been collected by the department and IDME once the case is closed? You know, in some circumstances, we understand that applicants have to request to have that data destroyed. Um, in others, there's uh, a set standard for the program. Can, can you describe that process? so we can inform our constituents. No, absolutely. Um, I will have my office provide you with that information. I know there has been a move away from the facial recognition for a variety of reasons, that being one, and also um, some equity reasons as well. Um, but that's also why we've also offered in-person verification at the career links too. So, but I would ha be happy to provide you with that information. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm glad to hear you reference that. The IDME process has often been advertised as being simple and easy. Um, and of course, if you don't have the technology to do it, it's not simple and easy. And we know that many Commonwealth residents, they may not have smartphone or good internet access. We've talked about that. They may not be familiar. Um, I'm wondering if the department staff uh, has, you talked about this earlier, but going into the career link facilities. Is that something that we are looking to continue? I heard you talk about it um, briefly earlier in your testimony today. So there's a, a couple of things currently going on. So as far as identity verification, we have um, asked asked our partners at the career links, our workforce development partners, to uh, the ones that specifically work for the department to, to engage in identity verification because we do realize that there are digital deserts across the state. There's a lack of, lack of digital uh, literacy or just plainly a lack of equipment. Um, so we do have that process in place at our 62 of our career links. So that's permanent. You're, you're co-locating staff at our career links to well, be able to do this. That's just for the identity verification where we've per partnered with those are workforce development staff. Right. But um, currently what we have currently going on is we have individuals um, traveling around to different le career links doing ask a UC rep uh, questions day. But with this equity grant that we were awarded by the federal government, that's where we're running the pilot program where we plan to put uh, one person, dedicated staff in the, in the career link for individuals to, to get that hands-on help uh, with their UC claim. And for busier career links, we'll, we'll, we plan on implementing two to three more uh, permanent staff. And we're hoping that the results will be so positive that we will make that a mainstay of our UC program. Great. I know that back in February, the IRS, uh, which was also using IDME, said that it was transitioning away from the verification process, uh, which used to, to get away from facial recognition. And, and that was in response to overwhelming concerns that it, the technology might not be reliable. Apparently, it also very often misidentifies women and people of color. Um, and again, that technology reliance. Um, are, are you investigating the elimination of facial recognition component of the IDME process here in the Commonwealth and adoption of other verification procedures the way that the IRS did when they faced those privacy concerns and technical issues? So we've had that discussion with IDME. My understanding is that the IRS is moving away from the facial recognition. IDME actually offers um, is, is actually moving away from that themselves and offering identity verification through other means. And that's what we're exploring, I mean, of moving away from the facial rec recognition and moving away to a more traditional identity verification. So those conversations are occurring. Very good. I, I thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, I, I would still like to delve a little deeper into a conversation about uh, data breaches with the Secretary, if I could, in a second round. Thank you very much.